On a brisk Tuesday evening in St. Albans, Vermont, we welcome you to Northwest Access TV's presentation of Franklin County Varsity Girls Basketball. My name is Bryce Batchelder, joined by Dustin Tanner, and tonight we are at Bellows Free Academy for a rivalry game as the Comets host the Siskoi Valley Union High School Thunderbirds. Before Dustin gives you tonight's starters, this live broadcast is made possible without our local sponsors. A huge thank you to Northwestern Rehab Services, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Candy Toyota, Novus Glass, h &B Greenhouse and Nursery, Sticks and Stuff, Swanton Lumber, and JC Image. If your business would like to join our incredible community of sponsors, contact Northwest Access TV at 802-782-8676. And now Dustin. Hey Bryce, how you doing tonight? All right, Dustin, glad you could join us. Uh, how about tonight's starters? Yeah, so for the uh, Thunderbirds coming into the game at one and two, it's gonna be number 10, Destiny Pigeon, number 12, Alexandria Bordeaux, number 22, Sierra Reynolds, number 23, Mackenzie Vincent, she's a captain, and number 24, Molly Meador for the Comets. It's gonna be number 12, Lauren and Kate Garso, number 15, Tessa Sweeney, number 20, Callie Tabor, and number 24, Jade Garso, and number 25, Ruby Desario. MVU started the game with possession. Both teams have had at least one possession now and have come up empty, both with some opportunities down on the block. We'll chalk it up to good defense, but there are the first points of the game, a three-pointer by Jade Garso. She is a sophomore out there for the Comets. The Comets open up with a three to nothing lead. Sort of Ruby DeSaro's Defense has been very tight on number 12, Alexandra Bordeaux, as she brings the ball up. I'm going to be interested to see if she ends up forcing a 10-second backcourt call at some yeah. point in this game. You know, Desaro comes, I believe that's the same family that came with Desaro comes from, if I have that correct. Might be, might not, but I remember a former Comet Desaro who was really good at defense. And they break the press here. Very good drive there by Desaro. He could not get anything out of it. But MVU's press, uh, I mean, almost forcing a five-second call, really had some good denial. The Comets just barely able to get the ball in. But we're going to get our first foul called of the game, called on BFA number 24, Jade Garso. Yeah, so, first for, first. so for MVU, the, the blueprint is still the same as it was a couple weeks ago in the sense of this is, you know, went 10 of 10 last year. You know, they're trying to lift the standard of what Thunderbird basketball could be. You know, and the Comets are a program to look at for MVU. You know, they are successful. They were the 2021 state champions in basketball. So, you know, it'll be really interesting to see how this group of girls matches up against one another. Um, beautiful defensive play there. That three-point attempt, no good for Garso. Uh, she's the only one in the scorebook so far tonight, but we're going to get first foul call on MVU. I believe that will be on number 12, Alexandra Bordeaux. That'll be her first team's first. Bordeaux's got a, got a the defensive fundamentals there. So that's one of those fouls that you can avoid if you just go straight up, you know, not in the position there, not in the defensive stance. It's just one of those simple fouls that you don't want to get early in the game as we're about a minute and a half into this game. And you don't want to take those because those will add up real quick. Desaro hits her first. She has one more to go. Goes one for two at the line, and Midor, uh, Midor gets the rebound for the Thunderbirds. Bordeaux dribbling the ball up, goes behind her back, loses the handle for a second, but is able to recover. Thanks to that tight defense, though, by Desaro, giving some trouble to Bordeaux outside the three-pointer, but Destiny Pigeon with Thunderbirds, first points of the oh, game, makes a 4-2 game. MVU's press paying dividends early on here as Sierra Reynolds ends up with the loose ball, gets it back to Bordeaux. BFA comes into this game 0-2. They lost a tight one to Spalding with the Crimson Tide, hit their free throws down the road, and then they lost one against Rutland early on, I believe, the first game of the year. So uh, BFA looking to get on the win column aboard here. It's an MVU team that's looking feisty so far. That press is working really well for the Thunderbirds. Two steals on the last possession alone. That MVU foul, an offensive foul called on the screen, set by Mackenzie Vincent, her first. Team second, just under six minutes left in the game as Vincent gets the rebound for the Thunderbirds. Bordeaux now with the ball up top, closely guarded by DeSaro. She tries to get it inside, 
and that will be off of the Thunderbirds back to BFA. You know, Dustin, you mentioned earlier uh, the Thunderbirds last year went 10 and 10, and, and you know, I went to MVU. I've lived in the area for most of my life. Uh, that has been the most successful girls basketball season from MVU that uh, I surely remember, and so they're looking to build on that. Uh, you know, worth noting, uh, first year head coach here, Tim Luno, uh, taking over the reins as Mackenzie Vincent uh, gets her first points of the game, makes it a 4-4 game. Uh, Tim Luno, first year varsity head coach at MVU, but certainly no stranger to coaching, uh, has done plenty of AAU coaching and has coached uh, in the schools at multiple levels. So it's good to see him get a, a, a chance here with the MVU program. Yeah, at the beginning of the season, I had talked to Tim Luna before the first game that we had on Northwest Access TV for about 10, 15 minutes about how, you know, raising the standard of the basketball program is something he wants to do. You know, he's a local guy. He cares about the program. And you can definitely tell, you know, the first three minutes of this game, you know, they went 10-10 last year. That's a banner year for that program. And they're looking to make 10-10 and 10 not a banner year. I think Tim Luna's going to really do a good job of that as, you know, he's got the AAU coaching experience. And we talked about this the last time we had a BFA MVU matchup, right? It's, you know, you got to be playing season-wide. you got to be playing year-wide at some level to get the continuity that you need to be able to win in basketball in this state. Also first year head coach with the Comets, Shane Garso. So we've got uh, a couple of first year head coaches here with their respective programs going at it tonight. Certainly got a tight one so far as DeSaro with a nice drive to the hoop. That gives her three points on the evening, puts the Comets up six to four. Medor goes down to the block, kicks that out to Vincent. That will be off the side of the rim. I really like that look for MBU. That was a very nice drive and kick it out to the basket. MBU's making some smart, you know, offensive plays so far in this game. They're sticking with it. That's a block right, right block there. By Vincent. Oh, do the work. I love a good block like that. And Tabor recovered the ball, but had a foot out of bounds as she did. And so the ball will turn back over to the Thunderbirds. 418 left in the first quarter. We'll be interesting to see how deep MU goes bench-wise tonight because they are missing three players. It is winter break at old school, so you know what happens during winter break is some families go away, obviously, for the holidays. And you do end up with a short roster for this week. So We'll see how Coach Luna adjusts and how if this um, is going to be something that we revisit as the game gets later on, as BFA has a full complement of players tonight. Some families uh, go places like Florida for winter break, and we are jealous of those families as we're uh, stuck hey, here. Florida was 15 degree was, Vermont. It was snowing in Florida on Sunday, oh, Bryce. Well, fair enough. Not jealous of all those who took Southwest Airlines, however. If you took Southwest Airlines, you probably are sitting in an airport terminal somewhere. As Tassaro with the ball outside the three-point line, looking around, turns to her right. A good cut by Johnson. And first points of the evening for number 23, Alyssa Boudreau, the junior. Puts the comments up 8-4 with 3.33 left in the second possession in a row. The Thunderbirds have been called for a travel. So Thunderbirds kind of getting bitten by a few of those turnovers that uh, I would say unforced turnovers that they're sort of causing themselves to commit. So something that they'll certainly want to look at cleaning up throughout the game. I think the biggest thing I always know about high school basketball in Vermont is so, so many traveling calls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I she saw the ref that looked like that was off. The Saro, the MBU crowd is all right. They reversed yeah, that decision. Good job. BFA is going to take time out here. Cassandra Reynolds uh, with the steal. Uh, for MVU. She had really good anticipation looking for that uh, backdoor cut and bounce pass. She knew it was coming, put her hands out and knocked the ball away and, and forced the ball to go out on BFA. But we'll have our first timeout of the game. 3.19 left in the first quarter. As I said before, the Comets leading 8-4. to four. So, honestly, a pretty even game so far. Uh, I think we, you know, certain things for, for both teams that they need to clean up. And you, as we mentioned, those unforced errors, those travels, but certain things going well for both teams uh, as well. We saw BFA kind of starting to get into their offensive rhythm a little bit, getting more opportunities, but also MVU's full court press has been working out very well for them so far. Yeah, you know, I think for MVU, what you want to do is just be in this game in the fourth quarter. You want to just play a good jump ball there. That's a really good defensive play there by Desaro to 
forced to jump ball because VFA has the possession arrow, so they'll get possession there. Um, but if you're MBU, you, you just want to you just want to get in the trenches in this game and keep it close to the fourth, and hopefully go on a quick little run, to take a lead there. Desaro with the ball, shovel passes it over to Carey. Carey's shot is off. We will get a loose ball foul called on VFA on the rebound. You got a box out there. You can't just come charging in like that. You have to establish your position. You know, if she would have established her position with the box out, I think you could have avoided that foul. Good press break play there by the Thunderbirds to get it across the court. That BFA foul called on number 23, Alyssa Boudreaux, her first, team second. It's the nice thing about this game so far, not a lot of foul calls. As we say that, we get another foul call. Mark it up to the announcer's jinx. Uh, but honestly, this game has had a good flow in that sense, that the referee has, has you know, has not been stepping in to stop the play. That was a really that smart much. play by Des uh, De Destiny Pigeon because she did not really have the angle for the shot, but she was getting double teamed, so she kind of just got up and threw it up there, and that's really, that's some good basketball. Mackenzie Vincent, with that jumper from the block, she has four of MBU's six points so far. Uh, by the way, that foul on BFA called the number 25, Ruby Desaro. That's her first, team's third. The MBU ball. Now, one of the interesting things MBU has been able to do here is to get out of this press break. BFA is known. This has been a program staple for, God, as long as I can remember, Bryce, is that BFA knows how to press. Um, MBU really doing a good job of breaking that up and getting a lot of good ball movement around. Down the corner, Vincent looking around, kicks it back up to uh, uh, Bordeaux. Bordeaux's three-pointer is off. Comment to get the rebound. Bushy pushing it back up, kicking the ball around the three-point line. Now a good drive and a block. Try again. Next time, not into the other, uh, not into the defender's hand. <laughs> Which honestly, I mean, it. it Seemed like a good look, right? That uh, she found the the lane on that, uh, uh, I guess from her angle, the left side, but also a very good defensive play, meeting the shot. A couple really good blocks so far for the Thunderbirds tonight. They've come to play defensively. Interesting. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, it looks like Sierra Reynolds has checked out. Reynolds was well, actually my my mistake. Mackenzie Vincent was the one who was doing the post on. Vincent is, I believe, the tallest girl here. And I think MVU is just kind of going to just give it to her in post and just see what she can do. And I think that's a really good strategy for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, yeah which uh, has not historically been the case. Generally, BFA has had the taller players. I mean, thinking back just in recent memory, Marin McGinn a couple of years ago. Yeah, Kelly Lagas, who is currently playing at D2 St. Mike's, like, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, here's that advantage that the Thunderbirds uh, don't often have. Let's see if they can take advantage of it, as you said. BFA with the ball down to Lawrence. Lawrence's shot is no good. Offensive rebound for the Comets. Three point attempt is good for Allison Bushy, her first points of the game. That puts the Comets up 11 to 6 with 120 left in the first quarter. A good idea there from uh, Bordeaux trying to get it down low to Reynolds. Reynolds wasn't quite prepared for it, but if she had gotten her head around, that would have been a, a, a really good uh, uh, find. But that find pays off. Hannah Brannon, she gets in the books with her first two points. The Comets now extend their lead 13 to six. I mean, it seemed uh, just a second ago, it was eight to six, and now yeah, the Comets have opened Sierra this up a little Reynolds bit. Sierra Reynolds for MVU was out of position on back-to-back -back defensive possessions. If she goes out of position again, I would consider calling a timeout if I was Coach Luna. Um, because EFA was able to run a very easy get, yeah, and Coach Lynn is going to take that timeout right there. Really smart play by him because BFA saw Sierra Reynolds cut to the right side of the key, or if you're watching on TV, it's also the right side, and knew that they could just drive to the left and have the open lane, and she did not rotate quick enough or at all. And on the possession before that, you know, Reynolds really was kind of looking. You had a couple, and not just Reynolds, you had a couple of other NBU girls who were looking a little lost defensively, and that's how you got that quick 5-0 run for BFA, because for MVU, the defensive positioning is gonna be important. You gotta know your assignments, you gotta know who your man is, or if you're running the zone, you gotta know where you need to be. 
So that second unit for the Thunderbirds came in for just a second, uh, that mixed unit, and they got burnt by BFA's experience there. Well, that timeout called with 40.8 seconds left in the first quarter. And, you know, I, I kind of hate having to take a timeout with under a minute left to go in the first quarter, but I, I kind of want to take that right. timeout so this game doesn't get too out of hand. BFA now switching to a zone defense for the last 30 seconds here. Collapsing down low, a scoop shot almost drops for lap, uh, for Pigeon, excuse me. Uh, unlucky bounce off the back of the rim. Comets now with the ball with 20 seconds left. That was an okay look. Nice travel there, Carl. Travel, yeah. That was an okay look for Destiny Pigeon. I would have tried to kick it out to Mackenzie Vincent, who was there on that foul line, and let her set it up again. Well, BFA zone was paying off. They totally collapsed inside the key as Pigeon was down there. And, uh, of course, when you have three people on you, it's often hard to see those opportunities. And a steal here in the last five seconds will not pay off with two tenths of a second remaining here with Comet's ball. So uh, maybe they'll draw up the uh, old lob to Dwight Howard and dunk it at the buzzer play. I don't think anybody can dunk it. Ooh. That's a nice shot though. Yeah, no, BFA, that's, so that's one of those little things about game management that you can coach is that when you are in the 10 seconds, the BFA girl kind of just let it go out of bounds. I would have told my player, hey, go for that ball, even if it's off on you. Because if you don't get there, you're going to have under a second to go. You know, if you got there, you'd have some, a chance to set something up quickly. Anyway, first at, quarter thoughts, Mr. Basketball. At the end of the first quarter, Comets lead 13 to 6. We'll give you some player stats here for BFA. Uh, BFA scoring has been spread out uh, wonderfully. Allison Bushy, Jade Garso, Ruby Desaro, all with three points apiece. Hannah Brandon and Alyssa Boudreaux, each with two points. For the Thunderbirds, scoring has been a little bit more concentrated. Mackenzie Vincent with four, and Destiny Pigeon with two. Before we go on, this live broadcast wouldn't be possible without our local sponsors. A huge thank you to Northwestern Rehab Services, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Handy Toyota, Novus Glass, h &B Greenhouse and Nursery, Sticks and Stuff, Swanson Lumber, and JC Image. If your business would like to join our incredible community of sponsors, contact Northwest Access TV at 802-782-8676. The Thunderbirds with possession here to start the second quarter, but not for long because Ruby DeSaro ripping that ball away gives the Comets their first possession. Comets swing around the, the three-point arc Garso looking around, finds Reynolds down low. Reynolds' shot just bounces off the rim and the glass. Pigeon now bringing the ball up for the Thunderbirds. So Back MBU's got their three tallest girls out there right now. So we can see what they did. That was a three-point shot taken. What MBU really, and I like that three-point shot taken, because MBU needs to find somebody who can shoot. Because right now, BFA can just camp out on the inside. Um, and just collapse that zone on anybody trying to do anything in the post. So if MBU can just get one or two three-point or deep two shots hit, just to get in the BFA head of, you can't just collapse on that post. It'd be just super to spread helpful out the that. defense a little bit, yeah. absolutely. Desaro drives into her left. Little shovel pass out to Garso. Reynolds now looking over on the right side. Good defense from Vincent to uh, shut down the lane. BFA running their offense really well, finding exactly the passes they want. Reynolds with a tough shot, but credit Vincent's defense for not giving Reynolds an open shot, and she gets the rebound. Thunderbirds. All right, let's see it. Oh, man, I thought we were going to have the Vincent battle on Vincent. <laughs> you know, Vincent is blind. I think that's Ella Reynolds, number 22. Yep. That's going to be a really interesting matchup because Reynolds is just as tall as Vincent. And you kind of stuck in that right corner, finally able to get it out. A layup attempt is no good for Reynolds. I'm but that one drops for Mackenzie Vincent. Mackenzie Vincent is doing the Shaq thing, like the return of the big man. Like I absolutely love what she has done in this game so far. On defensively, she's not missing the shift. She's not missing the cycles at all. And since she's come back in, BFA has not scored. Well, she has MVU's, uh, she has six of MVU's eight points tonight. Uh, so certainly getting it done down low. Uh, the thing is that the, the scoring for MVU has sort of been 
so slow, right? I mean, we talked about this even with the boys game last week. MVU kind of has to slow things down a little bit, though. Uh, that the scoring chances have come kind of few and far between. We have to see if they can speed it up a little bit to try to close this gap. And, and Vincent now going to the line, fouled on that shot attempt. Again, right, it's just right there, just put it her, to her in the right low block and just let her draw the defense in or let her just go up and post up. She's, she's very good at that. Like, I, it's really some, you know, like they talk about in football, right? It comes down to blocking and tackling, right? In basketball, it just really comes down to, I think, good post play and making your free throws. Like, those are, you can do those two things in a Vermont high school basketball. You can beat, I'd say, 60% of the teams, 70% of the teams you're going to see on a night to night basis. That BFA foul on number 22, Ella Reynolds, her first. Team's fourth as Vincent misses both free throws. So the score remains 13 to 8. Zara almost lost the ball, able to recover. Garso going to put that one up. That one is off the near side of the rim. Good rebound from Molly Medor, and she will be fouled. I don't really like that foul. I, th I think that was a little, I don't know, I'd say let him play a little bit. If you're going to, if you want to have. Baseball pass is open. Can't get it though. So, you know, for those watching at home, most of the time I do the play by play. And when you do play by play, you don't actually get to watch the game, as weird as that sounds. <laughs> um, so sort of have to talk the game a little bit. Right. So I'm getting to watch the game, and it's really interesting to see how these teams match up. Travel there. Another foul. Travel. Uh, that BFA foul on number 12, Lauren Kate Garso, her first team's fifth. So BFA close to that bonus side, but. The bright spot for them is that it, all the fouls have been on five different players. They don't have a player who's in foul trouble just yet. So they're going to run like a stack play where they're going to try to switch and do one of the guards free. The baseball pass oh, is wide open. Good wide open. Good play. That's a really good defensive adjustment because on the last possession, Midor was open for the baseball pass from the baseline, but they just didn't have the firepower to get it there. So good play there to realize that BFA has left that open twice in a row now. A three-pointer long for Garso, but the ball is off of Vincent as she was going for the rebound, and it will be BFA ball as we get a timeout called by BFA. 5.03 remaining in the second quarter. MVU now has closed that gap. They were down 13-6. to six. Now they're on their own little 4 nothing scoring run, has closed that to 13-10, to 10, thanks to Mackenzie Vincent, who has eight of MVU's 10 points. Yeah, Vincent on the sidelines, very gassed right now. I think the key thing to watch tonight is going to be just how many minutes Mackenzie Vincent can give MVU because the more she can give, the closer they can keep this game. MVU still has not found anybody who can hit an open shot outside of the key yet. That's going to be crucial for them. For BFA, you know, they get sucked into it a little bit. They, they have not found a way to get into the post as much as they want to get into the post. And their three-pointers, you know, they've had a couple three-pointers, and that's what been keeping them in the lead in this game is a couple of those good shots. So really going to be interesting to see what adjustments Coach Garso makes. Well, and the thing about Mackenzie Vincent I remember from last year is that she got a lot of opportunities, right? See, players, some players just kind of as a, a good three-pointer for Ruby DeSaro. That gives her six points, brings the Comet lead back up to six. And I believe the uh, uh, Bordeaux, Oh, interesting. Okay, I thought Bordeaux was, they so call it her she, foot out of bounds. Her foot, the BFA player touched the ball with the foot on the line before the MVU player touched the ball. So BFA got the, yeah, that's why MVU's got, got the it, yeah. Uh, as I was saying, the, the, the thing about Mackenzie Vincent last year, she knew how to get those opportunities. She could kind of find those open shots. The problem is that she was never she had a hard time kind of finishing them. She'd put them up and she'd just get unlucky bounces and they wouldn't fall. So it's good now this year to actually see those shots, those opportunities finish. And it's, it's paying off here with those eight points. So Guyette comes back in for MBU. Guyette is a ninth grader, um, freshman guard. So MBU does not have many guards in the program right now. Guyette would normally probably be playing JV, but she's one of the better JV guards. She got pulled up to varsity because one of the things that MVU is struggling with as they build the program up is that they don't have a lot of guard play. Good, good block a by jump ball. That is a one-handed jump ball. I, that is fantastic. I'm not sure if Vincent even jumped. No, she, she just, just put her hand, to put her hand. And just 
grabs the ball. By the, by the way, that last uh, MVU foul on number 12, Alexandra Bordeaux, that is her second. Team's third. And an MVU coach keep cheering, ball getting dropped. Destiny Pigeon now as the ball handler with Bordeaux on the bench with those two personal fouls. Gets it down to Vincent. Vincent going to turn to her left. That opportunity didn't drop as Garso got the rebound for the Comets. Tesaro bringing the ball up, going to drive it herself. <laughs> Shovels it down on the block to Madison Carey. Carey got her own offensive rebound and gets the put back, her first points of the game. And the Comets now up 18 to 10, and we will get a carry called on Pigeon. Possession goes back to the Comets. I'm trying to go faster if I'm, if I'm BFA here. I think BFA can beat MBU's defensive sets with speed. So I would try to get some transition buckets going if I was the Comets. I would not want to slow this game down if I travel there. Oh, loop screen, I think. Yeah, we're going to get a moving screen called on the Comets. Uh, but, you know, we all know basketball is a game of runs, and, and we've seen that exactly, right? It was, the score was 8-6. Uh, to six. The Comets went on a 5 to nothing run to make it 13-6. FDU went on a 4 nothing run to go 13-10. And now the Comets on another 5 nothing run to make it 18-10. Now, FDU's done a good job staying in this game, but BFA has the shooters. And you can notice how just having one or two girls who can shoot three-pointers has been really helpful for BFA. You know, Coach Garcia calls that timeout, gets the pop play, gets a three-pointer. Big thing here is for 338, MBU is now going to be in the bonus, so they'll shoot free throws the rest of the way. So I'd watch out foul-wise on BFA because, you know, you could really get them back into this game if you're MBU with free throws. Destiny Pigeon at the line for a one-and-one. One. That BFA foul called on number 21, Hannah Brandon, her first team seventh. The front end misses for Pigeon, and BFA gets the rebound to Saro, carrying it up. Also worth noting that there was another foul called on Jade Garso. That is her second personal. Got to get out of the trap, get out of the trap. Smart play there. <laughs> Got lucky that Vincent was standing right next to her, able to pick up the ball. Clean steal here, open lane. And Saro has eight points of her own and gives the Comets their first double digit lead of the game, now up 20 to 10 with three minutes to go. Bordeaux having some trouble. The Comets defense up at the half court line, really picking up its intensity, forcing MVU into some real troubling decisions. sorrow has got the Gary Payton hands when it comes to just being the able to make steal. Um, She's gotten a couple of those now. BFA bench wanting a penalty there on Vince, or a foul on Vincent. What is this hockey? What's um... Vincent with a decent opportunity, not able to get it to fall. I believe it's going to stay MVU. No, it will be Comet Ball. Uh, but as both teams have been doing all night, setting up in full court press. I think fbu has got to figure out a way to defensively. Vincent with another block. I think that might be her third block of the evening. This full court press is going to make this MBU team gassed, and I think it's going to make them sloppy on the offensive end and more prone to the simple mistakes on defense like that. Three-pointer no good for Hannah Brannon. another BFA foul, so MVU's gonna go to the line to shoot another one and one. And as you said before, this is the opportunity for MVU to try to get back in the game if they can draw some more fouls, but they need to hit their free throws. You gotta hit them, their free shots. But yeah. BFA foul called on number 23, Alyssa Boudreaux. That's her second, team's eighth. Molly Medor at the line. Hits the first one. She earns herself the second free throw. That is her first point of the game. Makes it 11 to 20. Matter of was one for two, but Vincent with the offensive rebound. A little too strong on the putback. We'll have a jump ball. Possession, BFA.
wide open on that left side was Cadence Lafferty. Lafferty oh, finding Bushy. That's the Bushy move right with there. a move. Bushy finishes. She has five points. Makes it 22-11. BFA. Bushy just straight up looked at Bordeaux and just like, I'm gonna fake you out. And then Bordeaux took the fake. Oh, Madison Carey. Had a nice seal, but not able to stop herself. Drags her pivot foot. It's called for the travel. The referee kind of had a sly smirk on his face yeah. saying, okay, I, I, I have to call that one. You gotta commit to the bit. Like, if you're gonna drive like that, you gotta go up. I know they're crashing on you defensively, but you gotta go for contact. Like, get hit and try to put that in the, like, draw that foul. Like, you can't, you can't pick up a dribble like that. And you trying to get the ball down low to Sierra Reynolds. BFA's defense, however, knocking that ball away out of bounds. MB will keep possession. I think the minute on a fast break, you stop. Like, unless if you're stopping around the three-point line, if you stop within the three-point line on a fast break, you have ruined your chance. Like, you just, you gotta go, you gotta commit. And you now in that right corner. They've gotten stuck there a couple times this evening. And BFA's defense forcing Molly Medor to step out of bounds. She's trying to go baseline, but Comet's defense really getting it done when they get MBU just trapped in those corners. Yeah, MBU has nobody that can pop out and shoot. It all comes back to the fact that, you know, if MBU just had one girl on that set that they could pop out and shoot, it would change the entire defensive calculus for this game for BFA. And BFA knows it. They know that they can just get them in that set and just trap them over on the right or left side. And not gonna mean anything. Three point attempt is off for Medor. BFA with the rebound, it's worth noting. Mackenzie Vincent on the bench. A nice pass and find as Shelby Lawrence gets her first points on the evening. Expands that lead, 24-11 for the Comets. And that was just a nice transition bucket. A Little bit of contact there. Refs deemed it wasn't quite enough to warrant a whistle. Comets now running down the other end. Corner three is off for it, Han uh, Hannah Brannon. Medor's open, shoot that. Medor trying to switch hands, trying to back down her defender into the block, able to draw a foul, and she'll go to the line to shoot too. I'd like to see Medor shoot a little more. I think she, I think she had a good three point chance there. Even, even I know the percentages say drive and draw that foul, but just for the sake of getting a three point shot in, I would, I'm like, I'm gonna love to see the shot there. Especially because the free throws are not going in either, so might as well take the three pointer. Bryce, how are we going to get high school kids to shoot 80% from the free throw line? <laughs> what, are we gonna start like clinics for first graders? We both have young kids. Well, uh, Medor hits that second one, gives her two points. Honestly, uh, I am a proponent of uh, Shelby Lawrence with two points. She has four with 20 seconds left. Uh, as a terrible free throw shooter myself, I've become a proponent of the uh, uh, Rick Barry granny shot. <laughs> it is a more natural shoulder motion than shooting above the head. And so from the free throw line, I think we ought to bring the granny shot back a little bit. I think we'll see some free throw percentages go up. You know, if it works, it works. Works for Wilt Chamberlain for one season when he did it, and then he stopped because he thought everyone was thinking he was uncool, and his free throw percentages dropped back down. Yeah, I don't think Wilt Chamberlain needs free throws. Oh, that's just <laughs> a terrible bounce. Unlucky bounce for Bordeaux with one second to go. Buzzer it's beater it. is good for Hannah Brannon. Oh, that's a killer going in the halftime, Ooh, Bryce. Makes it 29 to 12 at the end of the first half for the Comets. Brannon letting go of that one just in time. That's been a really interesting uh, first half. BFA finally pulling away, kind of as we expected here. We'll see if ever you can get back in it here in the second half, Bryce. Well, before we send it to halftime, this live broadcast wouldn't be possible without our local sponsors. A huge thank you to Northwestern Rehab Services, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, 
Handy Toyota, Novus Glass, HB Greenhouse and Nursery, Sticks and Stuff, Swanson Lumber, and JC Image. If your business would like to join our incredible community of sponsors, contact Northwest Access TV at 802 782 8676. As we head into halftime, the Comets up by 17 on the Thunderbirds, 29 to 12. We will be back in a few minutes.
We are back at VFA St. Albans as the Comets are hosting the MVU Thunderbirds at the end of halftime. Comets leading 29 to 12. I'm Bryce Batchelder, joined by Dustin Tanner on Northwest Access TV. Uh, we'd like to thank our local sponsors as we return from the break. A huge thank you to Northwestern Rehab Services, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Handy Toyota, Novus Glass, H&B Greenhouse and Nursery, Sticks and Stuff, Swanton Lumber, and JC Image. If your business would like to join our incredible community of sponsors, contact Northwest Access TV at 802-782-8676. Some first half scoring totals for you. For MVU, Mackenzie Vincent with eight points. Apologies, my spreadsheet just completely disappeared. Bryce. As I was about to read off of it, that three-pointer is good for Ruby DeSaro. And she is in double figures now with 11 points. Got my spreadsheet back. Yeah, my spreadsheet back. Tracks All that. right. All right. We're in good shape now as the first attempt of the second half for Destiny Pigeon uh, falls off and the Comets get the rebound and they'll take it out of bounds. Looks like MBU is going to keep going with their full court press. But here now with some scoring totals from the first half, Mackenzie <laughs> Vincent, eight of MVU's 12 points for the Comets. DeSaro, the only player in double digits with 11. Hannah Brandon with five, as well as Allison Bushy with five. Oh, good defense there by Nassaro. She's gonna dive for it. That should be a trap. Oh, they didn't call a trap. Okay. You know, they gotta get it across for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is called. Well, I mentioned earlier in the game with Ruby Desaro's pressure that she puts on the ball handler, wondering if she's going to force a 10 second call. If you add the 10 seconds, prop, prop, it has gashed. <laughs> Realizing. This is not a professional sports podcast. I know, this is high school, <laughs> and we are a nonprofit organization. No, but I mean, if you you could see it coming, right? You could see it coming from the very beginning of the game, like she was going to force it 10 seconds at some point, so she finally got it and did a really good job there. That's a good get up, rebound, put it back for Jade Garso. Jade Garso with a really nice cut across the lane. Uh, didn't get the first attempt to fall, but got her own rebound and kind of worked her defender, found the right opening. And she's at the line to shoot one as that MB foul called on number 22, Sierra Reynolds. Her first, team second of the first half, or se uh, second half, excuse me. Not a fan of the press here up by 23. Just gonna put that out there. Anyway. <laughs> well, some things you gotta practice during a game. Hey, it works. Sorry, with the steal. Finds Garso. Garso loses the ball for a second, gets it back, and is fouled again. Yeah, BFA at this point has very much clearly pulled away. 23 point lead. Garso going to line for two more shots. She's you now BFA has had the has had the ability to hit the key shots when they needed them. You know, they got some three pointers early in this game when it was tight, and I think that buzzer buzzer beater three pointer at the end by Brandon in the first half was just I think that was the final iceberg it's, uh, for Titanic there, but like it just, it just, that's such a deflator going. You would think three points might not be such a deflator going to the locker room, but it really is like that. It also kind of gets the crowd into it a little bit more, and uh, it, is, it is sometimes tough to recover. Uh, we're going to get another foul here. This one called on BFA on number 20, Kelly Tabor, her first, team's first of the second half. That other MVU foul was called on number 12, Alexandra Bordeaux. That is her. That was her third personal foul. Vincent with the ball, kicks it forward to Dupree, and just straight up taken away by Jade Garso. Excellent defense. I think part of that is that size advantage that Garso has on Dupree. Garso just arms are a lot longer and could just reach in there and take the ball away as BFA draws another foul on MVU. MVU just struggles that ball handlers. You know, we talk about this quite often with how good the girls hockey program has been up there. The, the skill players that would translate to being good guards just don't go through the basketball pipeline. This is one of the things where when hockey is king that you kind of struggle with. And 
one of the things that you know Coach Luna is going to rebuild and is going to work on is rebuilding that ability to get some of those girls earlier on and be like, you know, teaching them guard skills. You know, Bryce and I, we talked off camera for a bit about positionless basketball. That's going to be one of those things that MU needs to work on, right? To get it so anybody can play any position, basically. Tabor hits that one, her first points of the evening. She has two, extends the Comets lead to 25. They're up 37-12 with six minutes left in the third quarter. Uh, by the way, that MVU foul called on Destiny Pigeon, that's her second personal. MVU now just kind of looking for any opportunities here. Have not scored in the second half yet. Where this is the opposite story where MVU was able to draw a lot of fouls on BFA in the first half. Uh, MVU has been the one committing the majority of the fouls so far in this third quarter. So that BFA foul called on number 23, uh, 24, excuse me, Jade Garso. That is her third personal foul. Team second of the second half. But Dustin, as, as we were talking about, thinking about positionless basketball, is that that is something that has to be coached at all levels. You can't just start doing that at the varsity level. Right. You have to start back in kindergarten teaching, uh, uh, you know, every kid uh, how to play every position, how to handle the ball, how to go down low. Of course, you know, as, as someone who coaches uh, my five-year-old's teams, I'm not exactly uh, coaching the dream shake just yet. It's more or less just learn how to dribble in one place. But eventually, as you get into elementary school, uh, teaching post moves and, and teaching uh, uh, that ball handling and, and running the offense, uh, you have to be able to teach every kid how to do all of those things. Yeah, I know. It's, I mean, like I said, you know, like we said at the beginning of the show, 10 and 10 was a really good season for them. And they can still do 10 and 10. This is one of the things that you look at. You know, these two teams are at the very opposite end of the spectrum. I believe MBU is D1 this year. Maybe they're D2. I'm not sure. That's, That's a good take right there. You know, to go in. You need more of those for if you're MBU. But it looked good when Destiny Pigeon released it. Desaro now. Desaro with her 13th point of the evening. Comets now up 39 to 12. Of course, this Comet program, uh, no stranger to success as they were the state champions. Uh, Mackenzie Vincent gets a nice little turnaround jumper off the glass. Uh, that's a, a little, I'd say, a Tim Duncan-esque uh, and puts her in double digits, the only MVU player now in double digits with a three-pointer by Lauren Kent Garso. Believe it or not, uh, her first points of the evening puts the comments up now, 42-14. And I think we can see now BFA really pulling back their defense to just playing at the three-point line, essentially pulling back that press. Uh, but Comets, uh, no stranger to success. Alexander Bo uh, Bordeaux gets her first points of the night. Winning the state championship two years ago with that Marin McGinn team, uh, who was so much fun to watch uh, in the shortened COVID season. Uh, but still, uh, that, that certainly doesn't take away a state title banner that gets to hang in the gym. Forever, those banners hang forever. Um, thinking about teams that are known for success, we have a huge matchup here tomorrow night. Uh, Bryce is coming into this gym to play against BFA, and that'll be a fun boys D1 basketball matchup. We'll have that here for you tomorrow night. Desaro with the nice fake pass, and then keeps it herself. She now has 15 on the night, leading all players in the game. Comets now lead 44 to 16 with three and a half to go in the third quarter. Visit uh, Vincent with another turnaround jumper. That time doesn't fall. I would love to run some sets for Vincent here just for in-game practice of pop her out and have her take some three-pointers. I don't think it would hurt to have her try some three-pointers right now and to try to run some sets that you can use later on in the season when you're you know, when you're matching the teams that you're more equal to. Well, I'm watching uh, Vincent on defense right now, she looks absolutely wiped out. She has played the vast majority of this game. I think uh, has only taken a, a, a maybe a minute or so break on the bench so far and just watching her play whenever her uh, player that she's guarding goes on the, the uh, off side, the weak side. Um, she's just kind of letting her go and taking that moment to, to catch a breather. And sometimes when you're expected to play a whole lot, you got to just kind of find those moments to try to preserve your energy. 
But BFA in full command here, 306 remaining in the third quarter, a timeout. The Comets leading 44 to 16. Credit, yeah, credit BFA's defense here that yeah, they have been able to create all sorts of turnovers. Coach Garso taking the timeout where he's, I think, going to send out more of his younger players. And I think this is where you set the expectation of, all right, so, you know, we're in garbage time now for the last 11 minutes or so of this game pending some massive comeback. So we're going to put our younger players out there. We're going to run some sets. And this is what I want to see from you, right? This is what you want to see for your players. You know, you want to see good fundamental basketball. Even if the shots don't go in, you want to, you want to see the fundamentals now. Yep, these are development opportunities. As Ruby Desaro and Jade Garso, uh, two names that we've called a lot tonight, uh, take some time on the bench to get those other players out there. Uh, MVU here with a defensive opportunity. Uh, Bordeaux, however, not able to finish off the steal, and she will be called for a foul. That's going to be number four on her. Is indeed, and that is MVU's sixth foul of the second half. So BFA will be in the bonus for the remainder of the game. Good ball movement there to get it from the right side all the way to the left side to get an open three-point shot. Again, it did not go in, but the fundamentals of the play were there. Porto with the ball, takes it over to Gaillette. Gaillette puts the shot up. That one's short. Uh, again, we mentioned earlier, Guyette, a freshman playing at the varsity level. That's pretty impressive in and of itself. And a nice take from Allison Bushy. She has seven points now. Puts the Comets up 46 to 16. MVU trying to run some offense here. BFA's defense, though. Good possession there by um, well, the defense was there, but that was a really good take there by Cassandra Reynolds to just go in and get something out of that. Reynolds, first points of the evening. Shelby Lawrence trying to get the ball to go in unsuccessful so far uh, on that possession, but BFA still will draw a foul. And that will be number five on Alexandra Bordeaux. She is done for the evening. We'll finish with two points. And Hannah Brannon will go to the line for BFA to shoot two. Brannon <laughs> makes the first one as Bryce coughs. We don't have the uh, little silence button. We don't. During coughs. You know, I think. Allen, our technical coordinator, is hanging standing out right by the game behind us. Get the silence button for coughs. If we can put that in the production budget next year. <laughs> Double the budget from zero to zero. That's right. Anna Brandon goes two for two from the line. She has seven points. The Comets leading 48 to 18. 140 left in the third quarter. Finishing each other's sentences. We are. We did this, you know. I feel like it's like getting back on the bicycle because we didn't work with each other for about two years, and this is back-to-back -back games that we've done now. Bryce shows up for the MVU BFA games. Well, with uh, two small kids at home, uh, limited now in how many oh, yeah, games no, I can I have do kid, with, I, uh, I get it. If, if I want to stay married. That's, I, that's, that's the ultimate goal, staying married. That is the it's, ultimate goal because, you know, you can always find basketball to watch, but marriages are a little harder to find. They, uh, I think it's the Northwest Access can't make me sleep on the couch, but my wife can. They, so, that's uh, exactly, that's right. I mean, I, I was putting together a Hot Wheels set before I got here. I told this story to Bryce when I got here, but my kid got like the Monster Garage 2018 Toy of the Year, by the way. Um, and I was putting it together right before, like, it meet, like I got here at the start of the um, warm-up because I was working so hard to put that together. Meteor checks out now for me. Back to the basketball. There is a basketball game being played. And you take the ball from the baseline, stolen by number 10, Cadence Lafferty, the sophomore. And she will be fouled. BFA going to go back to the line. Or are they going to go back to the Okay, they'll be a one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. The refs were talking about that for a second. 
Well, Lauren Johnson, number three for the Comets, well on top of it. She had told Lafferty to go down to the free throw line before the refs did. That MD foul called on number 14, Cassandra Reynolds. Her first, team's eighth, minute 15 to go. Reynolds, one of the three senior captains on this team, Destiny Fidget and Mackenzie Winston are the other ones, you know. MVU's got a really young roster. You know, they're missing Kelsey Parody and Aaliyah Wilson tonight, who were both ninth and 10th graders, along with the other 10th grader on the roster, Jalen Langlois. So, not the youth that we're going to see from MVU was not really on display oh. tonight. Excellent pass. <coughs> Excuse me, Vincent not able to finish. But what a pass from the three point line just goes over the head of the BFA defender and absolutely on target in only place that Vincent was going to be able to catch it. Bryce, you're gonna have to get you to do more play-by-play, -play, man. You're losing well, here in the second half. I have a strong voice. I keep going and going and going. I don't cough. Lingering COVID, pal. Not now. Not now. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> Not now. Good, good to be out. It's good to be out. Uh, a couple months ago. We just got that lingering cough. A couple, couple months ago. That, is, for, that, uh, that is the new world. I do public address announcing, and I, for the first month after I had gotten it, I was just, it was hard to dig deep for some basketball games. <laughs> As Cadence Lafferty now gets her first points of the game, missed that free throw, but gets the layup. BFA now leading 50 to 18, with 16.6 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We will get a kick called on BFA, so MBU keeps possession, will take it side out of bounds. I think we are in the uh, Joe Buck, Troy Aikman vamping section of this game now, Bryce. Oh, have we got some vamps for you. Unlike the Manning cast, we can't just bring in celebrities for interviews. I mean, maybe we can. We got a microphone. We're sort of going around the stairs. Um, you know, we really do enjoy bringing these broadcasts to you, though, on our first access TV. And I think even though the score of this game isn't close, we have a bunch of great games coming up, like BFA and Rice tomorrow night on the boys' side of things. And we got a bunch more MBU girls games coming up. You know, MBU is going to end up at one of those. Nice bucket is made there by the uh, Sierra Reynolds. Sister. That's exactly what you want to see. A good drive to the bucket, a good strong put up of a shot, and got the foul. And that foul on Shelby Lawrence, number 14. That is her fourth personal foul. Team's fifth with 8.8 .8 seconds remaining. Sierra Reynolds misses the free throw, but scored on a nice find from Mackenzie Vincent. Two seconds left. And that'll do it for the third quarter. The Comets extending their lead to 30, leading the Thunderbirds 50 to 20 at the end of this fourth quarter. I'd like to remind you that this live broadcast wouldn't be possible without our local sponsors. A huge thank you to Northwestern Rehab Services, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Andy Toyota, Novus Glass, h &B Greenhouse and Nursery, Sticks and Stuff, Swanton Lumber, and JC Image. If your business would like to join our incredible community of sponsors, contact Northwest Access TV at 802-782-8676. And just a reminder that Northwest Access TV is a nonprofit organization. If you're enjoying the sports coverage throughout the year, please consider making a donation. Just visit northwestaccess.tv slash donation. Northwest Access TV, you know, talking about how it's a nonprofit. I remember uh, 10 years ago when the station was still in BFA, I walked in on a state internship program and just the amount of community-based television and community-based goodwill that you see from the station. It's not, it's something that you can't really, you, you take it for granted when you're not in St. Albans or the Franklin County area, you know. All the things that the TV station does from election night coverage to sports coverage to Making it so all your boards, school boards, and city boards, and town boards are publicly accessible and on record. Amazing stuff the television station does. Not just sports that we're giving you. And a reminder that our studio, we have a great studio with professional grade equipment and a staff who can teach you how to use it, and it's free. Yeah. If you want to come in and you have an idea for a show and you want to make it, do it. It's and, free, and we will help you do it. And it's not like it's junky equipment. It's it's state of the art. It's, like we got the gaming lab. We have 
amazing cameras that you're not going to find anywhere else unless if you want to cough up five to ten thousand dollars. We had some like, uh, green screen fun the other night doing the Santa call-in show. I tuned into the Santa show. I was going to try to get Atticus to call in again. Um, Alan made me a tiny little elf coming out of a gym. I was wondering house. if you were going to be the tiny little elf again, and I tuned in. I'm like, Bryce is the elf again. Um, love the Santa show tradition. My son did ask why I was so small when I got home. Well, that's just part of the magic. Santa's got that ability to make people small. And happy. <laughs> Minute gone by in this fourth quarter. Neither team has scored so far in the quarter. But Destiny Pitchett saying, I'll change that. Hits a three-pointer. She has five points on the evening. Comets still lead 50 to 23. Some tight defense here. Somehow Lauren Johnson gets through it. And a Great assist to finish that up as Madison Carey scores down low on the left block. BFA up 52-23. Before the game this evening, uh, uh, the BFA athletic director, Dan Marlowe, uh, had a presentation, though, uh, about the Powder Puff game that happened a few months ago. Uh, both teams as that BFA basket scored by Madison Carey. She now has six points. But MPU and BFA with their annual Powder Puff fundraiser, uh, they are able to present Camp to come to uh, with a check for $12,404.50. So just an incredible community event where both high schools and all the towns that feed those high schools come together uh, to raise money for a great cause. It's such, you know, we talk about the rivalry renewed and the fact that these are cross, you know, cross town rivals in the sense of Swan and St. Albans. One exit, to, or two, one, one to two exits at 89, on, depending on which St. Albans exit you get. Right. Um, and Laura Johnson gets her first points of the evening. And it's just so cool to see that powder. I drove back past that powder book football game this year. And it is by far the loudest football crowd of the year at the <laughs> Collins Pearly. Um, and it's just such a great environment, and you love seeing it every year. And hopefully the tradition continues until we're well and old, Bryce. But no, it's a fun thing, and being able to present that type of check to a nonprofit, just to, you know, Camp to come to does great things for kids, you know, kids with cancer. And it's like being able to just get together and play a touch football game and present that much money to a charity, it's such a great cause. Destiny Pigeon with an excellent block. MVU again only have a three girl bench tonight. Uh, one of them has fouled out, I believe. So, Cadence Lafferty now with four points. Comets up by 35 now, 58 23. Ashlyn Dupree with the ball closely guarded by Ella Reynolds. A little size disparity in that matchup. Trying to get the ball over to. Cassandra Reynolds, who drives down, and Lauren Johnson intercepts the pass. But loose ball here, recovered by Molly Medor. Up to Reynolds. Reynolds bring it over half court. Pigeon looking around, gonna drive with her left. Tries to scoop it around Ella Reynolds. Shot doesn't drop, but is fouled. Will go to the line to shoot two. Both teams in the bonus now. So everybody will be shooting free throws for the last 421 of this game. Is Ella Reynolds' second personal foul. Pigeon misses the front end. Coming out of the game to the uh, Ella Reynolds getting the ovation. Pigeon goes one for two. She has six points now. Will be good for BFA to get on the win column. Came into this game 0-2, played some really tough opponents at the start of the year. Now that Division One girls basketball schedule is kind of a meat grinder. <laughs> it um, is tough. Hit the Chittenden County teams like you know they haven't even seen CBU or Rice yet, and Rice apparently lost to North Country or Lake Region, I believe, who beat MBU handily. So Lake Region is good this year. Rice is good, like always. CBU is still CBU. <laughs> CBU 
CVU will always be CVU. South Burlington has some talent. I um, wonder if they can put it together. Same thing with Burlington, like always. Essex is getting better and better as far as the girls' basketball goes recently. If they foul on number 20, Callie Tabor, her second, team's eighth. Molly Medor at the line. She a one and one. This is the front end. Allison Bushy kicks it up to Garso. Bushy back with the ball, goes inside to Tabor. Tabor met by Vincent. Three point attempt is good for Lauren Kate Garso. That gives her six points. Comets lead 61 24. Three and a half left to end this game. This ball down to Mackenzie Vincent. Vincent, a nice turnaround. Unlucky bounce off the rim. Or I should say roll off the rim. Roll, rather. And MVU's defense just not stepping in front of the open person, but Allison Bushy not able to finish the layup. But kind of a, a, a lapse in communication for MVU in their transition defense that Allison Bushy had a wide open lane for that layup attempt. But we are going to get another BFA foul called on number 20, Kelly Tabor. That is her third personal, team's ninth. So next BFA foul, and MVU will be in the double bonus for the remainder of the game, which means that every foul is an automatic two free throws. So for the Thunderbirds, they will go to Milton on Thursday against the, uh, the Yellow Jackets. They will then come home for a game against North Country on Wednesday, January 5th. And then it is a one, two, three, four, five game road trip. Middlebury, Colchester, Lake Region, Mount Abraham, and Fairfax. So a lot of road games coming up for the Thunderbirds. They'll have most of their home games at the back end of their schedule this year. Get another BFA foul on 25, Ruby Tassaro. That's her second, team's 10th. So MVU in the double bonus for the last 3.05 of this game. Medor now at the free throw line. Shoot two. This is the first. For the Comets, they get North Country at home on Thursday the 29th. And then they go, uh, they get Enosburg here as well on January 2nd. And then they take the trip the killer trip to Rice on the 4th and then Essex on the 6th. So that's going to be a big week, that second week of January, or first week of January, rather. Another lapse in communication for MVU's uh, defense in transition as Ruby DeSaro took that all the way down the right side. Vincent tried to step in at the very last moment, but at that point, DeSaro already by her and to lay that in for her. Uh, her 17th point of the evening. But BFA now another foul called on Callie Tabor. So that is her fourth personal. And Vincent will shoot two free throws. Who's the leading scorer for BFA tonight, Bryce? Ruby DeSaro with 17 points. As we just saw her 17th. I was looking up schedules to talk about the road ahead for both teams. <laughs> it's really interesting how they both have uh, you know, MVU's got some winnable games coming up. They should win at Milton on uh, Friday or Thursday, rather. So that'll give them a chance to end up at two and three. They'll be one and three coming out of this game. Mackenzie Vincent goes one for two from the line. She has 11 points. Comets up 63, 25, two and a half to go in the game. Ruby DeSaro kicks the ball out to the corner. Three point attempt is a little too strong from Allison Bushy. Pigeon with the ball for MVU, get, tries to get that into Mackenzie Vincent. Knocked away, MVU somehow able to recover, but ball off of Mackenzie Vincent's fingertips out of bounds. Uh, referee is calling it off of the Comets. 
be still trying to get it into Vincent. Shucking some elbows here with two minutes left to go. Good defensive play still from both teams. BFA not giving up. And you know, that's what you want to see from the younger, you know, younger kids on this team. And you know, you want to play, you know, just because the game is over and just because the game is handed not mean you can't show good defense. Vincent with another turnaround jumper. That one doesn't fall. Last three possessions uh, from out of bounds. MVU has tried to get it into Mackenzie Vincent. Uh, BFA defense kind of knowing where it's going at this point and not giving her very clean uh, receptions of the passes or clean looks uh, at the basket. Johnson will be called for travel as she drove into the lane and stopped and dragged her pivot foot. Some scoring leaders for the game, as I mentioned before, Ruby DeSaro leading all players with 17 points. And for BFA, Allison Bushy and Hannah Brannon, each with seven. Madison Carey, Lauren Kate Garso, and Jade Garso with six points. For MVU, Mackenzie Vincent leading her team with 11, and Destiny Pigeon with six. Pigeon missing that jump shot. Johnson now for BFA, dribbling up the floor, finds Bushy. Is she going to drive to her right? Find Shelby Lawrence just across the lane. Lawrence now with six points. Comets leading 65 25 with a minute 10 seconds left in this game. Sierra Reynolds stops down at the block, kicks it out to Pigeon. Pigeon's three pointer just bouncing out. Comets heading the other way. Johnson with the ball. Bushy looking around, gonna hand it back to Johnson. 50 seconds left. I think BFA at this point will be just happy to dribble the ball around. Maybe take one or two more shots, if that. They were happy doing that. They were happy, and then they 40, threw the ball a little too high. 41.3 seconds remaining, MVU ball. Note. 30 seconds left in the game. And you passing the ball around the three point line. Reynolds with the drive. Shoot it. Three point attempt. That was blocked. Good, good defense there from Allison Bushy to get a hand on the Goliath three pointer. 17.8 remaining now. Pigeon passing it over to Vincent. Vincent gets that one to fall. A little shooter's touch with the roll. She has 13 points. 10 seconds left. Comments up 65 27. They are set to just dribble out the clock. 2 1. And that will do it from BFA. The Comets come out on top in commanding fashion against their rivals, the MVU Thunderbirds, winning by, six, uh, by a score of 65. 27 again some points leaders for the evening Ruby DeSaro leading all players with 17 Allison Bushy and Hannah Brandon each with seven and for MVU Mackenzie Vincent leading her team with 13 and Destiny Pigeon with six Dustin what are some of your final thoughts on the you evening? know MVU came out with the right recipe in the first half but they just weren't able to get enough scoring and eventually BFA was able to run the game that they needed to run get some clutch three-pointers to extend that lead, and that was all she wrote, basically. You know, MBU want to go work on the shooting, want to get somebody else that can help with that, you know, Vincent's ability to score. BFA, just keep doing what you're doing and get ready for your next couple of tough games. Before we end it tonight, this live broadcast wouldn't be possible without our local sponsors. A huge thank you to Northwestern Rehab Services, Collins Furley Sports and Fitness Center, Handy Toyota, Novus Glass, H&B Greenhouse and Nursery, Sticks and Stuff, Swant Lumber, and JC Image. If your business would like to join our incredible community of sponsors, contact Northwest Access TV at 802-782-8676. And just a reminder, Northwest Access TV is a nonprofit organization. If you're enjoying the sports coverage throughout the year, please consider making a donation. Just visit northwestaccess.tv slash donation. Again, Comets come out on top against the Thunderbirds, 65-27.
My name is Bryce Batchelder, and for Dustin Tanner, we want to thank you so much for watching Northwest Access TV. Have a great night.